Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk, back again with you guys for another show, for another episode of our Eyes of the Opposition series. Now this is the show in which I get the perspective of an opposition fan, writer or journalist, and, uh, and they give me their basically perspective from the side of the opposition being this time Tottenham Hotspur. Now we are building up to the North London Derby and I knew when I started this show that this was going to happen eventually, that I would have to bring on a member of the enemy uh, onto the show. Um, but I'm very happy this week to be joined by someone I know very well uh, from my time uh, doing a little bit of work for TalkSport. Uh, and that is the former producer at TalkSport and current assistant producer at IMG, and that's Joe Aldridge. So, people in the comments, be as nice as possible. He's taken time out of his day to send over some answers and give you some content from their side. But I understand there are going to be some tensions. But let's try and keep it relatively civil because we definitely have to produce this content for you. Um, but let's get straight into things. But before we do, please, if you're enjoying the series, give it a like. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And we do a lot of live shows. And if you want to get involved with those, you can do that by getting into our live chat. And the easiest way is to turn the notifications button on, which you click that little bell, and it'll tell you when a show goes live. And you can get involved, put your thoughts across, even ask questions as well, which is really interactive. We well, yesterday did our Guna Talk podcast with Mems and Drew, and there was lots of people in the chat asking questions throughout uh, and you could be some of those people that do that so please do get involved as much as feasibly possible but let's jump straight in uh, and ask the first question to Joe which is quite a simple one we've seen that Arsenal and Spurs have had two very different starts we've seen Arsenal beat the teams which they were supposed to in Newcastle and Burnley and then lose their big game against Liverpool which wasn't too much of a surprise whereas on the other end of things we've seen a Spurs side lose against a Newcastle side which Arsenal beat but ultimately then get a point away at Manchester City. So quite a contrasting pair of starts. How would you evaluate both teams' beginnings to the arts, to the new Premier League season? How do I evaluate the start of the season for both clubs? Uh, for Arsenal, I mean, I think the situation is pretty similar to last year, to be honest with you, in terms of they've beaten the teams that they, they should have beaten. Um, good result away to Newcastle. Getting the better of Burnley, you know, probably could have scored more but equally I think results could have gone the other way so I wouldn't say they were spectacular performances but you know got the got the results of six points that were needed I don't think there's any reason to get carried away with that which you obviously see quite a few Arsenal fans doing and I obviously and I often think that's kind of the cause of um, your own downfall uh, I think kind of getting ahead of yourselves I think you, your level was shown against Liverpool I don't think anyone can compete with Liverpool or Manchester City personally uh, including Tottenham, um, you know, and and is that a bracket that you kind of want to be in? Probably not. So I think it's just been a, an okay start for Arsenal. I wouldn't be getting ahead of myself if I was an Arsenal fan. Um, but at the same time, you know, um, six points out of out of nine is is a decent return. For Spurs, it's uh, as a Spurs fan, it's been pretty pretty frustrating start to the season. To be honest with you. Every game has been a really poor performance, in my opinion. Got the win against Villa for 75 minutes, controlled possession, but just created absolutely nothing. I think the the result against Man City, I mean, got incredibly fortunate. I think poor performance, City deserved to win it. You know, last season, they would have won it because the goal wouldn't have been ruled out at the very end. And the Newcastle performance just, just summed things up really, really poor, lack of creativity. And again, it's probably continued from the end of last season, to be honest with you, in terms of we just look like we're low on confidence. You're never confident that we're going to win a game, um, you know, going into it, whereas probably a year ago we would have been. Um, yeah, and the, the Arsenal game is a chance to put, put that right because we don't look in a good place right now. We seem unsettled off the pitch. It is not, not a great time, to be honest with you, when it should be going into our new stadium. Brought in some new players for the first time, you know, in in a year, uh, even more than that. So, you know, uh, it's it's been a um, a disappointing start. Now, whilst the start to the season may not have been so impressive for Tottenham Hotspur, what I was rather jealous about was some of the signings they made. Um, and Don Bele, fantastic signing, uh, and Lo Celso, someone who I've liked at PSG, and then went to Real Betis and, and really did sort of replace the outgoing Danny Ceballos and, and provided that little bit of, of creativity that they needed. And since then, I haven't really seen too much of them. And Don Bele's had a good start. Lo Celso's not really had too much of an impact as of yet. Um, but I'm intrigued to know how you sort of see their summer, considering the fact that 
there are so many controversial points coming out regarding the likes of Christian Eriksen, for instance. So how has this sort of unsettled nature in some of the Spurs players affected the season so far? Regarding the situation, uh, Spurs outgoings, it's a disappointing one, really. I mean, we shouldn't be in this position. I think we've seen the troubles Arsenal have got into over contracts um, where players have, and key players have left on a free and... We don't really want to be in that position. But my mentality is short term. I think Christian Eriksen has to stay. I think whether he stays without signing a new deal, just, just keep him. Um, we are, and it's shown, we are not as good without Christian Eriksen. I think um, this whole model of Spurs, Spurs have a great team. I, I'm not disputing that. We, we have a, a, a great side, probably the best side in my uh, generation. We need to build on that, not get rid and, and you know replace. Um, our biggest issue hasn't been one to eleven. I think one to eleven we had the third best team in the Premier League when everybody's fit. But that's the problem because when you start losing players to injury suspension, we haven't got the strength and depth, and that's been a problem for the last three seasons or so. So I don't really understand the point. You've brought in Giovanni to sell so great signing, but what's the point of bringing him in if you're then going to let Christian Eriksen go? Surely you're in the same boat that you were in before, where if Lacelso then gets injured or is suspended who's going to come in to replace him we need to have a squad where we are replacing the likes of Ericsson with La Celso or La Celso with Ericsson you know we need to have those world-class players in there that if we let Ericsson go I, I don't I, I just don't see it um, I think it's a, a really disappointing situation it's definitely affecting the players it's affecting Pochettino it's just not not great and to be honest people say last season, summer we had a a really disappointing summer because we didn't bring anyone in but for the first time in however many years we had a summer where we had no distractions because we thought key players were going to leave and every other summer before that we had done you know whether it was Kyle Walker going back to Gareth Bale even Luka Modric um, and this summer it's kind of gone back to how it was where you've got these rumours surrounding Christian Eriksen and whether he's going to go I, as I said I, I think Spurs need to try and keep him at all costs some of the other issues, you know, Jan Vertonghen is the other big one. Don't quite know what's going on there, but obviously something isn't healthy behind the scenes. So, again, I think something needs to be resolved here because he, he should start on Sunday. There's no doubt about that. He's, you know, he's, I think he's our best centre-half, personally, closely followed by Toby. Uh, you, you need to play him, and I think we've shown we're quite frail defensively. Um, without him and it, we need to have Batongan in there. Now even with all of the controversy and transfers and, and difficult starts to both of the Arsenal season and Spurs season in some aspects, uh, I think that it's always the classic cliche that form does go out the window when a derby rolls around. Um, but seeing as both Arsenal and Spurs lost their most previous fixture, do you think it's a chance for both teams to then bounce back and be determined to do so, leaving a more open and free-flowing game? Or do you think it's going to be one which is more cagey? I expect this one on Sunday to be quite cagey, but I mean, I expect that every time and it never is. So I don't know. I, I think Arsenal, by nature, are a very top-heavy team. So they are, they are very attacking um, and not strong defensively. You know, I know you brought in David Luiz to try and shore things up. You know, we, we've we seen Spurs going forward, they can create chances. They haven't done so, so far this season, but equally they haven't looked great defensively. So I think it will be KG, but as I said, I've thought that so many times in the past and how many times has this derby just produced a goal fest? So I wouldn't be at all surprised if it's exactly the same again on, on uh, Sunday. Mm, yeah, intriguing. I think that when it comes to this game, we're going to see a team which is definitely trying to bounce back from a, a defeat which is expected in Arsenal and one that really wants to put things right in Tottenham Hotspur coming back after that Newcastle defeat. But then obviously we've got to think about the fact that in that Newcastle game, Tottenham Hotspur are up against a side in which they sat back, they absorbed pressure and hit them when it, and they needed to and, and hit them very effectively, something that Arsenal actually failed to do in the, in the game against Liverpool. But does that then mean that playing against Arsenal is going to help Tottenham Hotspur play more open? Is it going to allow them to have more chances? How do you see Arsenal's style actually aiding Spurs' attack in this game? I think that's the one positive um, ahead of Sunday. You know, we said after the Newcastle game that you know I go with some of my family, and we all said the the one good thing about facing Arsenal now is we're going to face a team that aren't going to sit behind the ball. Um, I think. 
City are obviously a class above the rest, but Villa and Newcastle will sit behind the ball. And most teams you play against in the Premier League against Spurs now will try and sit behind the ball to try and get a result. Um, Arsenal are one of the teams that will come at us. Um, and, and I think that will lead us to having more chances probably combined um, in the three games that we've had so far, so far this season. I think we'll probably have more chances in this one game than we've had all of this season. So... Um, yeah, I th I think it will it will suit us and and but it's key is going to be defensively here. I think for both teams, um, attacking wise, you know, with Spurs with Harry Kane, anything can happen. Arsenal can, you know, score goals for fun. Um, but yeah, I think it it's going to be one defensively here. You know, who's who's more solid on the day and. Uh, who knows who that will be. It always comes back to that key word being defence between these two clubs and it's not something that Arsenal fans would like to put too much uh, emphasis on in terms of breaking the Arsenal side down, being the defence. I think we've had issues there already this season, even with our new signings and not bringing up the Liverpool game too much again, but I think we definitely saw that in that match. But ultimately, this is a North London derby which is happening quite early on in the season. It's one of the earliest ones that I can remember for sure. Usually they're, they're around end of October, November time from the best of my memory. But seeing as this is so early on in the season, a result which goes either way or a draw, how much an impact do you think this has in the rest of the season in the long term? Listen, you always want to win a London derby, you know, regardless of when it is. In truth, I don't think it matters too much. I mean, you lot done us last year at the Emirates. It's the most kind of atmospheric I've ever seen the Emirates. It was a really down day for Spurs because we were just outplayed from the get-go, yet we took the lead and then we threw it away um, and still finished ahead of Arsenal. So, I mean, I don't think it makes a massive amount of difference, to be honest with you, but it's bragging rights and everybody wants to win it. You know, we've only won once at the Emirates. We want to put that right. It's about time that we got a result. We've gone into games in the past where we think we are heavy favourites for this against Arsenal and, and we haven't got the result. I think this time, probably for the first time in a long time, we go into it as underdogs. There's no reason, reason why we can't do what Arsenal have done to us in the past and, and get kind of a surprise result, I guess. Very honest. I think that... Yes, I agree. I think that Spurs are going in as underdogs for the first time in a while. Arsenal fans on yesterday's podcast were saying that they were more confident than they had been in a long time. And I think that comes down to the unsettled nature of certain players at Spurs and injuries and, and not replacing players like Kieran Trippier. And also I think it comes down to the fact that Arsenal have had a decent start at home. They are very, very strong and we know that. And they've made some very good signings as well to add to that. And I think that a lot of that will lean in the Gunners' favour. And I'm trying not to be as unbiased as feasibly possible when previewing a North London derby, which sounds almost impossible uh, and it probably is but I think going ahead into that it's, it's going to be a game which is going to produce goals I think it's going to be entertaining uh, a good advert for the Premier League is that always that cliche that's used uh, but I think it genuinely will be uh, I can't wait for it I'm excited I'm sure you are too Joe um, and then that obviously leaves us with one last question and quite a simple one but give me your score prediction for the game be kind uh, my prediction <sighs> I said earlier that I think it's going to be tight and, and cagey and I'm going to go with that. I think it's going to be one all. Um, I think Spurs will lead, but I don't think they'll be able to hold on to it. Uh, and they'll cave in and concede. But I think this one will finish all square. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a fair, uh, that's a fair one, mate. I, I'm always the optimist, it's fair to say, and it's, it's glad to see that you're being optimistic in your end as well. I think that it's going to be a really tough one for both teams. It always is uh, in this modern day era of, of North London derbies. And uh, I was very confident, I say very confident. I mean, I predicted 4-1 yesterday on, on the on the Guna Talk podcast. And that is just my optimistic and, and naive nature maybe coming out of me. But I think that Arsenal have the capability to, to put them away. I think Mem said that as well on yesterday's podcast where he thinks that we can put them away. But you can't discredit the quality that Spurs have sometimes and whilst we, we like to insult them and, and, and take the mick as we always do because that's what fans do, it's bragging rights as Joe said um, I think there is a level of uh, a need of level headedness and uh, I think there's uh, this is the opportunity for it to be very very cagey but I just think with the leakiness of the defences and they've shown this season that they aren't allowing uh, too many clean sheets to arise in these games that it is going to be goals and if one team wins it is usually quite comfortably we've seen 5 twos, we've seen 4 ones, we've seen uh, some, some big victories on the other side as well so it's going to be really intriguing to see where this goes a huge thank you to Joe Aldridge uh, I always leave uh, the details of, of the guests in the description and I will 
But again, I'm aware this is the North London Derby and Joe is coming into uh, enemy territory here. So be nice uh, as much as possible. But I really appreciate you coming on, Joe. And uh, I'm sure we'll speak to you again. And the other one says, well, I say we'll speak to you again. If we lose, I might hold back a little bit because I'm sure you're going to give me a little bit of stick. But we'll see how things go. Huge thanks to Joe as per. And uh, I'll see you again very, very soon. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please subscribe because you can get these every single week with a member of the opposition, giving them their perspective. We've talked to Stay Hall of, of Liverpool. We've talked to Andrew Musgrove of Newcastle, Andy Jones of Burnley. Some really, really good writers and journalists out there that have contributed and Joe's no different. So thank you ever so much to everyone who's been tuning in and leaving the comments and leaving the likes. Keep it up. I'll see you again very, very soon. And as always, up the Arsenal. Come on, lads. Let's get these three points against Spurs. Thank <laughs> you.